Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome back to my workshop. And today I'm going to solve a problem that I created when I put my dust extractor on the wall. Let's get tinkering. I put my dust extractor on the wall about a year ago to free up floor space in my small workshop. And I'm glad I did it. It's definitely the right solution for my workshop but it does come with some problems. The main one is that the buttons to turn it on and off are far too high, I can't actually reach them. I wouldn't be able to reach them even if the table saw wasn't in the way, which it is. So my solution to that is just to use a bit of old scrap. You can see it works pretty well, but it is a little bit inconvenient. So today I'm going to get rid of the switch that it's currently got and fit a radio remote. But before I can do any of that, I need to take it off the wall. I'm filtering the hoover out rather than using the internal brush because I was told by a viewer that it would prolong the life of the paper filter if I hoovered it rather than brushed it. So I'm going to investigate how I need to modify this. We've got the mains coming in here which in the UK is 240 volts. It's going into this NVR switch. This is one of those switches that if it loses power turns itself off. Not sure why they put one of these on this sort of machine really. It's not a particularly dangerous machine when it's sitting on the wall just sucking air. But it does mean that you can't actually control it by just putting a switch on the plug. You have to control it from here with this NVR switch. So I need to bypass this NVR switch and fit the remote relay in here instead of the NVR switch. It goes without saying, if you're not happy with mains voltages, this isn't something you should do. And it also goes without saying that this will invalidate your warranty. I'm going to start by unscrewing the actual switch. Obviously the power is off. So I just want to reiterate before I go through this that I'm not a qualified electrician and there are some dangers when you're messing around with mains voltages, especially with motors where they've got huge start capacitors which store a huge amount of energy. But I'll tell you what I think I've learned about the wiring. So this is the back of the NVR switch, four terminals, and the terminals are configured to be two switches. And the switches release when there's no power, because there's a little relay in here that ensures that when there's power coming to the NVR switch, when you press the button, these will then engage. And if there isn't power connected, then these relays won't engage. What appears to happen is the live from the plug socket comes in, it's connected inside that box and goes onto a white wire and that white wire disappears into the motor. I'm not sure what this white wire is doing. Um, it might be to do with the start electronics. It might be um, thermal protection. It could be a load of things, but it goes into the motor and then a white wire comes out and comes into the input side of the NVR switch. The output side of the NVR switch is brown which normally in wiring would indicate a live wire um, but that may not be the case here but that's normally how it would be wired in in the UK. The neutral from the socket simply comes in goes across the switch and comes out on a blue wire to the motor. The earth from the socket is connected to the frame of the motor. So I think that if I connect my relays across these two then I should be able to remove this NVR switch and connect up my remote switch. The thing that I want to be really careful of is not touching any of these terminals because of that start capacitor because I don't have any simple way of um, discharging it as far as I can see. I'll take you through the kit that I've bought. I'm guessing it's from China. It says in the instructions, so the relay is a 40 amp relay. The fuse on the plug is 13 amps and it says it's good for appliances up to 264 volts. It's a bit of an odd number, but we have 230 or 240 volt electric in the UK. So that should be fine. 
there are two little fobs just with a simple on off on and then this is the relay the box of tricks it's uh, a radio frequency so it has a uh, little antenna I need to make sure that this antenna is accessible it can be inside the box because I think the box is plastic but I'll check that if the box isn't plastic then I'll have to make sure that this is mounted outside of the box and it's simply got four connectors on it and there's a little wiring diagram here so these two are the inputs and these two are the outputs now if we look at these we can see that they want a uh, little fork shaped um, connector but the connectors that are currently being used are spade shaped ones now, I don't want to cut those connectors off because I want to be able to replace this if it, replace it all if it doesn't work so I'm going to have some short leads that have a fork connector for this on one side and they'll have the um, spade connector on the other that I can plug the existing cables into. Okay, so this box is plastic and this box conveniently is big enough to fit in that way and it's small enough to fit in that way. In fact, it's almost a perfect fit. What I need to do is create a little adapter so that I can pop that in there and screw this to the adapter and then screw the adapter to this box. That way I'm not drilling any holes in this box and keeping it all original but that's going to go in there nicely like that. I've made up these four cables so I don't have to modify any of the wiring on the machine so if I ever want to put it back to exactly as it was it will be an easy job to do. I'm ready to wire up now it's unplugged from the mains but I still had this large capacitor to worry about so I'm going to do this very carefully. This one is from the mains so it should be completely dead. That needs to go to blue in which is there, and that is now completely insulated. But what I will do is just add a little bit of tape around it just to be sure. I've made this little 3D printed um, interface unit which will allow me to connect the RF board and relay to the original holes. This goes in here like this just because of the positioning of where this wire comes out, which is the antenna, I'm leaving it on the outside. Probably add a little bit of hot glue, just so it doesn't move around. That's on there like that. Now we just need a couple of screws there. And now the moment of truth. Perfect. Well this has been a great project and as a bonus I got to clear the dust bag and the dust filter and if you've enjoyed this project please leave a thumbs up. If you've got any questions leave them in the comments and if you haven't already please subscribe and I'll leave you to the wonderful noise of remotely turning on my dust collector.